Greetings and welcome to Real Politic. This is James Tracy. What will the United States look like in the year 2030? To what degree will the modes of surveillance, already pervasive throughout society, be intensified? Will the common aspirations of things such as financial self-determination and property ownership be possible? Right now, as I speak, a program of control is being put into place, not by the federal government, but rather by your local city or county officials. And it's all based on fraudulent science and a scheme to make a whole lot of money at our expense. Our guest on this episode is a prominent researcher and activist on this issue. Deborah Tavares also has her own radio show Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific on RentsRadio.com. That's the Rents Radio Network. You can find out more about her work at StopTheCrime.net. Hello, Deborah. Well, thank you very much, uh, James. Um, it's a pleasure to be on with you. Uh, I'm going to cover some information and refer to documentation. And the documents that we have on StopTheCrime.net are all free downloads. However, we do know that sometimes people can't download documents, and for that reason, I'm going to give a phone number right now that is a print shop. And for the cost of printing and shipping only, you can get these documents that we're going to recommend because these are very, very important documents. You can call area code 707-586-9558. Once again, area code 707-586-9558. Now, uh, you mentioned that um, our cities uh, and our counties uh, are bringing in policies that are going to change the nature of mar uh, and create a new market within the United States. That's absolutely true, but I'm going to back up just a little bit so that everyone understands the uh, reality behind these plans, because these plans are horrific, and they just didn't pop up. These plans are literally and have been in the making for many, 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 many decades, and we're going to look at that briefly. I have a YouTube, however, that I would encourage everyone to watch. It is called Who is Running America and the Climate Action Plans. Again, Who is Running America and the Climate Action Plans. I go through in much detail uh, many things that we were not taught in our disinformation, indoctrination, educational system here <laughs> in the United States. And one of the things that most, sadly, most people were never taught was really what happened with the 1913 Federal Reserve. And there's nothing federal about the Federal Reserve, and as everyone knows, there is no reserve. What we find now is that all of your cities and counties, uh, school boards, in fact, all of the um, U.S. corporate government agency system is literally run running on grants and contracts. This is a significant reality of our further enslavement and increase in national debt. Having said that, uh, it's also an established fact that the United States federal government was dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933, as declared by President Roosevelt. What does that mean? It seems like we have a country that's operating. No, it was dissolved. And what that means is this, that the receivers of the United States bankruptcy were the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. And it's most important to understand all United States offices, officials, and departments have been operating within a de facto status in name only under the emergency war powers. Now, what does that mean? Because certainly you can go down to your city council meeting, you can go to a county board of supervisors meeting, and they have public comment. It's very important to understand they're all incorporated. They're incorporated structures. They do not work for you. All of the indebtedness that's increasing at every meeting, and you can go into your city's agenda and find out 
how many uh, grants they are approving. They're literally getting their revenue base from money, from grants. Uh, and this is quite staggering. It's the reality here in the United States. We're running on debt notes, and it's increasing voluminously every single minute, actually, as we all know. But, again, uh, it's important to understand how government really works, and mm -hmm. we were not taught how government really works. Uh, nor were we taught about uh, the climate action plans, and nor has anyone really broken that down. That's why I refer you to who is running America and the climate action plans. There are many documents that we refer to in that YouTube that you can watch, uh, and you can download the documents. But when we look at that and we look at um, your city, now here's what you can do and what I would recommend you do. Type in the name of your city in your search bar, followed by Policies to Reduce Greenhouse Gas Emissions. Again, the name of your city, followed by Policies to Reduce Greenhouse Gas Emissions. You will find the policies in your town. This is an executive order. Our government runs through the Oval Office of the White House via executive orders. We can stop scratching our heads and asking the same question over and over again. How can they continue to create these executive orders that are absolutely redefining what everyone thinks America is? Well, America's not what we've been taught it is. And I would also really recommend that uh, people take a look at a very important uh, book. It's entitled The Great American Adventure, Secrets of America by retired federal Judge Dale. That is a free download from the uh, uh, homepage of StopTheCrime.net. And there's also another important book that I would recommend that people uh, look at. It's called Fruit from a Poisonous Tree, Secrets That Were Never Revealed. And this is by Melvin Stamper, S-T-A-M-P-E-R. This will help to explain what you've just heard me say, because what I just said is the basis for the policies that we're going to be talking about right now. And again, that is the policies that are reshaping a new market in the United States. A new market has been organized. It's called the New Green Economy. The green economy is based upon the uh, falsified science that we must reduce our CO2 emissions or our greenhouse gas. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that that's fraudulent. Right. Just as we know that the illusion of petroleum being a fossil fuel and being a finite fuel is also falsified science. We know that Rockefeller created the illusion of uh, constrained oil reserves and petroleum reserves so that they could keep the price up and charge us and control us. So an excellent YouTube to watch is called um, um, Origins of Oil. Origins of Oil. It's by Colonel Fletcher Prouty. And there's many uh, referred documents to that. Again, Origins of Oil. Very important YouTube. Um, just as oil is referred to in all of the documents that our children are learning in school and in all of the documents coming out of your cities based on false um, science, they refer to fossil fuels and our need to reduce our use of fossil fuels. Again, petroleum does not come from fossils. Petroleum is a renewable energy resource that is consistently created within the mantle of the earth. Our petroleum never came from dead dinosaurs. Again, all part of the false science and the reinventing of a reality. This is a war on reality that we're all in. Now, I'm going to just add this at this moment because it's all part of the plans coming out of your city that you now must reduce your water supply, your water consumption, to reduce your uh, carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. It's most, most important for everyone to understand the same playbook of scarcity is now being created out of water. And this is a major, major um, opportunity for you to spread some good news because 
what you'll hear me talk about during this broadcast is not necessarily good news by by any measure. But the reality that we have primary water uh, is why we do not have a water shortage. Uh, we can no longer allow the media psyops campaign to frighten us about scarcity of water. We have to understand that the Earth is the water planet and continuously produces water from within the mantle. In fact, water as oil or petroleum is a renewable. Uh, we have an abundance of water. So you have to ask yourself, why would the corporate government agencies create the false science of water scarcity and the fear that we're running out of water? Well, of course, the goal is global control, uh, monetary uh, increase of resources for the controllers, and the creating, uh, creating a, com a compliance to water monitoring, required reduced uh, water use, and charging us much higher costs, all based upon our ignorance of where water really comes from. And we're seeing here in California where I am, I'm about an hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge, and as we travel from San Francisco down to Southern California, we drive through the San Joaquin Valley, which has been California's breadbasket for decades. And we see large signs along the highway, and it says, no water, no jobs, no food. The San Joaquin Valley in California is uh, and has been producing uh, major food resources for the entire country. And it is being massively hit right now because many of the ranchers and farmers uh, believe that uh, they must reduce their food production because they believe that there is a water scarcity. So they're literally forfeiting their ranches, their farms, and their livelihoods, believing that they're out of water due to the drought here in California. Now, the drought here in California, and I'll add this in at this moment, is an engineered drought. It's a part of the geoengineering program, which is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate. So for any of you that have uh, questions about that being a reality, I urge you to go to our other website entitled ToxicSky.org. Toxic sky.org and take a look at controlling the weather by 2025 by the US Air Force. Well, I can say that they are ahead of schedule. So primary water again, it's in abundance and we must start looking down for water instead of up. We've been taught that our water comes from rain and snow melt. It doesn't. All water that is visible on the face of the planet begins with primary water that comes up from within the mantle of the earth. This explains where springs come from, where geysers come from. Mm -hmm. This is also why they were able to populate Israel, because in the early 1950s, they had primary water experts locate the water, and literally um, thousands of gallons per minute can be pumped out, depending on where you hit uh, and access the primary water. And here in Northern California at the end of August of 2014, you may recall in Napa, which is in the wine country, we had a significant 6.0 earthquake, millions of dollars worth of damage. Well, what happened was it dislodged some of the uh, fractures and primary water started to flow in the previous dried streams and creeks. And the water agency, again, was baffled. They did not know where that water was coming from. So when you're hearing about the wells pumping the ground uh, water basins uh, dry, or certainly where we're hearing that there is land subsidence, where the land is literally denting in because of over-pumped uh, groundwater basins, we need to understand we can move the water around very easily by accessing primary water via wells. In fact, this was um, what Momar Haddafi did when they were drilling for oil. Mm -hmm. They discovered primary water, and he built the 
great man-made river project, which was the number eight wonder of the world. And this was a project that was bombed by NATO when we went in there and absolutely crucified Libya. So for those of you that want to learn more about that project, you can go to stopthecrime.net. At the very top of the home page, you will see a link, Primary Water. And uh, we have another website called primarywater.org where we have a half-page, double-sided flyer that we're recommending everyone download, make copies, pass this out far and wide. It is up to us to break this disinformation of water science because we have documents that show maps, conflict maps, on the level of opposition for stealing property because of water theft and inability to use water. The Department of Interior has a, a map that shows the Western United States color-coded by the level of resistance of in taking the water supply. Now, I've got another YouTube in that regard. It's called Water Wars, Stealing Water for Profit and Power. Again, Water Wars, Stealing Water for Profit and Power. Now, this all works into the climate action plans that are requiring all of you to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. What you can also type in your search engine, again, is the name of your town, followed by energy audit companies. The name of your town, followed by energy audit companies. A cascade of companies will appear. They will be offering you free in-home energy audits. Now, it's most important to uh, deny access. Do not agree to a free in-home energy audit. You can even and most likely will be contacted by your utility provider as well. Uh, we, are been, we have been getting calls from our utility provider here in Northern California, which um, is called PG&E, which is the acronym for Pacific Gas and Electric. Now, uh, very startling is uh, when we type in PG&E in our search bar, followed by Rothschild, we found that Rothschild runs PG&E. Uh, PG&E was featured at the 1992 Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit and was tasked as being the template and the model utility company for the other utility companies across the United States. This is a banker takeover of all energy resources in the United States and globally. It's most important to understand the connection and how our country is run. We are run by corporations uh, via the international bankers. So um, once you understand how politics really work, how government really works, the truth about petroleum, the truth about water, this should reduce some of the fear that has been in a massive campaign to frighten every one of us and to frighten our children. We must help alleviate the fear that they are being taught in school all this false science. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's very, very stressful for our kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I just want to say, James, right now, because we do have a link on StopTheCrime.net right underneath the banner head uh, entitled Kids for Profit and Eugenics in the Schools. Again, Kids for Profit and Eugenics in the School. Uh, it's horrifying. And why am I bringing this up when we're talking about climate action plans? Well, our children are being falsely educated to believe that global warming is a reality, and it is not. They're the ones that are coming up underneath all of us that are going to further these diabolical takedown plans of the global human population. This is a war on a massive scale. This is a redefining of everything that we've ever previously known, and it goes much further than that. But again, when I uh, talk about the climate action plans and what you can expect in your town, uh, again, uh, you're going to get a knock on the door uh, or a telephone call offering a free home energy audit. It's a three-phase program. Understand 
there are three phases of reduced um, CO2 emission requirements. Uh, and in general, uh, by the year 2050, we need to be as close to zero emissions as possible. In fact, Bill Gates said if he had one single wish, it would be zero CO2 emissions by the year 2050. That's mm -hmm. 2050. Now, I want to tell you what the Department of Energy says about that. Again, you can go to stopthecrime.net, go to our energy action um, link, our climate action uh, plan link, excuse me, and you can take a look at this, but I've put it together in YouTube fashion with all of the documents that I've been referring to. Again, who's running America and the climate action plans. But here's what it says in a document, a report, uh, out of the U.S. Department of Energy, and this is page 83. And it says, the real goal of energy use is aiming for zero. Wait a minute, okay, aiming for zero. They tell us sustainability is not the same thing as zero energy. There is no such thing as zero energy. Energy does not exist in a vacuum. It always comes from somewhere and goes somewhere. Because there is always a cost to energy, trade-offs are inevitable in order to find a harmonious balance that offers the greatest efficiency and the least impact on the environment. This is the ultimate goal, to not use energy. The most efficient energy is energy we do not generate. This is not a technology. It is a behavior modification or learning to live in a new reality. So you might be saying right now, wait a minute, the ultimate goal as stated by the U.S. Department of Energy is to not use energy? It's a behavior modification? Well, let me explain what the climate action plans tell us. All properties outside of your city growth boundaries are considered unsustainable and sprawl. And the eventual goal is to turn them all into natural habitat. For many of you that have uh, been familiar with Agenda 21, which is, was renamed to Future Earth, uh, you'll have heard of the Wildlands Project. Well, this is all wrapped up in the climate action plans as well. Uh, and in fact, uh, what we have discovered, and a very important question for all of you to find out as well, here in Northern California, we have enormous swaths of land that are being uh, literally converted into open space and or conservation uh, space and or parks. Now, we've discovered as the land is taken out of private property ownership and converted into um, open space or parks, there are no longer property taxes collected on those properties. We have discovered here that our uh, volunteer fire departments now are on the cutting block because they're the fire departments that service the areas as defined in the climate action plans that are sprawl. And this is one reason why our roads are in disrepair. Uh, there's no need to spend uh, bank bankers' money because they've raided all of the funds that were put aside for um, gas tax and road improvement and so forth. There's no point in um, re road repair in areas that you're not supposed to uh, access any longer. Again, all part of the Wildlands Project. Mm -hmm. People say, well, how do I find out if I'm in the city growth boundary or if I'm in the country? Well, you go down to your planning department or you try to find it online, but it would be your planning department in your town that would have the map, that would have the radius showing the uh, city growth boundary. Now, many people think, oh, good, I'm inside the city growth boundary, so I'm not considered sprawl and I'm not considered um, unsustainable. Well, yes, you are. Um, every, and I want to repeat this slowly, and I'll repeat it again, because this is an enormous leap. Okay, De De Deborah, we're just, uh, we've got about a minute to break or less, so just so that you okay. know. 
Mm-hmm. Well, then what I think I'll do, because what I'm going to be saying right now is so important that we'll probably need to pick it up on the other side of the break. Just keep in mind, I'm going to tell you something rather profound, and we'll discuss that on the other side of the break. Thank you, James. Okay. We're speaking to Deborah Tavares, who is a really well-known, prominent researcher and activist. She has her own program over on the Rents Radio Network, Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. You can find out more about her work at StopTheCrime.net and uh, the wealth of other websites and YouTube videos that she has uh, has provided here in the first half of the show. This is uh, James Tracy here on Truth Frequency Radio, truthfrequencyradio.com, and Real Politic. We'll have more with Deborah Tavares in a moment. Welcome back. This is James Tracy here on Real Politic on Truth Frequency Radio, truthfrequencyradio.com. We're speaking to researcher and activist Deborah Tavares. Uh, her website is stopthecrime.net. And Deborah, I'll turn it over once again to you. Well, thank you so much, much, James. Just prior to the break, I was telling um, you that I was going to state something rather profound, uh, and I am. It's very important to understand what is happening to the United States and other countries uh, globally. The Climate Action Plan is a plan that's being globally forced upon the global uh, population to reduce CO2 emissions, which is all based on fraudulent science. I would recommend, again, that everybody watch um, the YouTube we have, Who is Running America and the Climate Action Plans, and also, very important, because I tie in the report from Iron Mountain, which is a report that came out in the 1960s in this other YouTube that relates to the Climate Action Plan too, about water, and it's entitled Water Wars, Stealing Water for Profit and Power. Now, what is happening? Well, we talked about the uh, Wildlands Project, the consolidation and mass required relocation of the American population into mega cities. That is what is being developed, and it is on steroids now because the climate action plans, by and large, have been approved and adopted in most cities right now. An example of that here is in Northern California, where our climate action plan was approved and adopted June the 5th of 2012. All of the other um, cities here in Sonoma County, in the wine country, are adopting their plans right now. Very important to understand that they sign uh, contracts and take grant money for the development of a template. These are all templates. The climate action plans are templates of a universal global plan. And they just insert their own uh, city's uh, pictures, make it look like it's tailored to your town. No, it's diabolical, and it is tailored globally. So what I'm going to say right now, I want you to think about, because uh, with every every, uh, property that is outside the city growth boundary being considered sprawl and unsustainable, what does that mean? It means that it's going to be ultimately converted and rewilded. They want it uh, converted back to natural habitat. Well, let's look at the homes inside the city growth boundary. There are documents that I uh, talk about on the Rinse Radio Network uh, that tell us that every single building structure, I'm going to repeat it, every single building structure is out of compliance based on these um, corrupt corporate uh, energy retrofitting requirements. So what do I mean? Well, what do they mean? These climate action plans are requiring retrofitting. It's the first tier of assault on all of our properties, uh, where code enforcement will come out based on your allowing people in your home to conduct a free in-home energy audit. These audits go on a national database, massive computing through NSA. Every house is identified with what the first uh, requirement on your in, in your homes is going to be. 
Generally, you're going to have to have a cool roof. You're going to have to have solar energy. You're going to have to convert all of your inefficient appliances and equipment to Energy Star equipment, rated equipment, which is RFID, all interfacing with the required smart meter on the exterior of your homes. Now, I don't need to tell many of you how horrific the pulsed microwave frequency is, and mm-hmm. this is all part of of brain entrainment. This is all part of the ultimate mind control with these frequencies being increased in all of our homes. We're talking about the change outs of our um, uh, HVAC, uh, heat and air equipment, uh, any and everything. And here in Sonoma County, it says in our climate action plans, we are to eliminate the use of gas appliances, that everything must be electric. Well, of course, once they eliminate resources for us to access, it becomes easier for control. But uh, when we look at what's happening inside the city growth boundaries, all the houses are deemed uh, unfit for the new technologies. Every single structure is going to be ultimately eliminated. New cities will be built, just as we're seeing new structures in Dubai and in other mega cities. We're seeing these very strange high-tech buildings. Uh, and they're going to be about 280 mega cities globally. They're going to be sprawling cities. And it talks about in these documents the increased level of crime, the mixing of ethnicities where that increases a disenfranchisement of different groups, as well as the use of robots and um, mechanization that is going to cause massive unemployment with the youth. Now, the climate action plans are uh, three-tiered, as I was saying. The first tier, by and large, is a requirement via um, executive order here in the United States, where uh, it's generally a deadline by 2020, where we have to reduce our CO2 emissions um, 17 to 25 percent below 1990 levels by uh, uh, 2005, uh, or below between 1990 levels to 2005 levels by the year 2020. Now, let me repeat that and explain what that means here in Sonoma County. We have the most aggressive target dates of required CO2 reduction levels of any plan that we have seen throughout the country. Here in Sonoma County, we are supposed to reduce our CO2 emissions 25% below 1990 levels by the end of 2015. So what is that going to look like? It's going to look like what we see happening here, hiring of additional code enforcement officers. They even have an environmental task force division of the police department. Again, I detail this in the YouTube, Who is Running America and the Climate Action Plans. You will be stunned, absolutely stunned. They're using the same resources to track environmental Um, crimes, as they call it, as they would track um, a murder case, surveillance, etc. It is absolutely stunning. And I will tell you, the only reason that I found out about this environmental police task force is I was attending a city council meeting in which they were given a a, a, a reward uh, or accommodations for such good work. And um, it's important to go to the meetings, your city council meetings, from time to time. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, we're all recognizing that they don't listen to us, people that are sitting there do listen. And it's important to take flyers with you and pass flyers out. You can go to uh, the YouTube channel on StopTheCrime.net by going to the homepage. Just scroll down a little ways. You'll see the YouTube insignia. Click on that. I've done a number of three-minute and four-minute YouTubes uh, delivering information at the city council meetings. Mm. And I cannot tell you how many people come up to me and ask me for the information that I just delivered. This is the way to get your city 
uh, and create an awareness between the people that are unaware of these monstrous plans that are occurring. What What is most important right now is we all help in educating our reality because we must uh, use this time we have right now to elevate the level of safety within our communities because the diabolical forces that are coming down on us are coming down on us. Well, Deborah, b- before you continue, you mentioned this activism. You mentioned going to your city council, speaking before them. And along those lines, you had mentioned to me in the past that um, you also, it's a good idea to contact the individual or the individuals that are really in charge of these climate action plans and ask for the signed contract and the grant. How did these things come about and who funded them? Absolutely, yes. In fact, when you find out that your city has approved these climate action plans, or they call them also energy action plans. Mm. That's why I recommended earlier in the broadcast, um, James, for people to type in the name of their city followed by policies to reduce greenhouse gas emissions because they're, they have different names. But yes, you can go to your planning department once that you see the plan has been adopted and request a copy of the signed contract and the grant. It is stifling because when you do some research with some of the consulting firms that are participating in this, you find that they are con- they are firms that are associated with um, the IRS, uh, with the World Bank. I mean, this this is a consulting level. Uh, we're all in a massive Delphi program globally, where uh, meetings are all controlled by. Um, hired consultants. Our cities have hired consultants now for redoing our general plan. In fact, most of you that are listening, you can uh, go to your city, find out if they're working on updating their general plan. Likely they are because that has to be in synchronization with these climate action plans. I also discovered, uh, James, that uh, they are uh, the cities are approving lenders to offer, on a voluntary basis, loans for retrofitting. In other words, when you're told what you must do, new windows, um, all new appliances, possibly, again, cool roofs and and solar and added insulation, which are not bad things to do. We're all for wanting to be um, uh, reducing our energy consumption. Mm -hmm. But this is a forced requirement. And again, this is only the first tier of forced requirement. Um, There are going to be lenders, again, part of a new banking um, lending program, where they will make loans uh, allowing you to pay for all of these required retrofitting. And the loans are tied to your property taxes. They're not collateralized against the property. They're they're tied to the property taxes, which, of course, is in first line of any default and runs with the property so that if you sell your property, those loans are tied in to the property taxes. An ingenious scam, yeah. absolutely ingenious. And along those lines, you said that the retrofitting has to be done before you transfer your property, before you sell your property to to another, another buyer. Well, absolutely. Um, in fact, that is a, a, a very, very um, scary reality because uh, during the process of escrow, with the banks that are part of the required and the controlled mechanism of all of these agendas, uh, likely uh, there will be added constraints to funding loans in the future uh, as a result of required reductions of energies. Because again, this is a first tier energy reduction. The next tier is to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions even further. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, again, as I stated earlier, All homes will not be able to comply. We will not be able to comply. And what will happen is our homes at various stages and degrees will be red tagged by code enforcement, not fit for habitation as a result of not being able to comply to the reduced energy requirements. And that's part of the design. Absolutely. That's how in which they will take properties 
and force people into uh, these human settlement zones. Now, I know many people call it stack and pack. I don't think we're going to be as fortunate uh, as being moved into new constructed small spaces. When you are forcing people off their lands, many people will not end up in new locations, as we so well know, because this is all around a genocide program. Again, the report from Iron Mountain uh, talks about the uh, maximum reduction of the population resources and the taking of property on an annual basis. But again, um, these plans are global. They're in your town. Don't think because you live two miles down a dirty, dusty road that you're not going to be affected. You are going to be affected. And they're increasing frequencies as a result of the smart grid. There are many uh, aspects of increased frequencies that are causing increased illnesses and death. I'm going to just read you something out of this Advanced Energy Economy booklet. It's their new uh, 2014 booklet. And again, that's uh, advanced, advanced Energy Economy, um, and it's E A E E. It says their mission is to transform public policy to enable rapid growth of advanced energy businesses. Now, I'm going to stop there and add this most important concept. We're a, ma a maze of corporations. We're being run globally. We're USA Inc., and the globe is 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 um, Earth Inc. So we're in a maze of, um, of corporations. It's all a massive market. It's a big business. So I'm going to continue. AEE's Advanced Energy Report of 2014 is a market report that shows that advanced energy is $1.1 trillion global market, as big as the pharmaceuticals worldwide. The nearly 170 billion annual U.S. advanced energy market is equal to the revenue of all the U.S. airline industries. This is all about a market. Now, I'm going to read this to you. This is a, a, a caution and understand. Many of us are going to start realizing that we're, we're not well. Uh, and I would refer everyone, Jim, to the top of the home page of StopTheCrime.net uh, where you can print off a symptom list that is within a scroll at the top of uh, Stop the Crime. The reason I'm recommending everyone print this off is the process of relocating us into these massive, massive mega cities is to increase control via um, flat panel arrays, cell phone towers, uh, antennas, um, all of the monitoring signaling devices that are intended to uh, be a silent weapons system and literally a slow kill of people. People are becoming very ill. They're going to Big Pharma for a variety of medications because they're sick from increased frequencies. This is a major silent killer in the United States, of course, along with what is occurring in our air uh, with the chemtrailing program, the poisoning of our water supply, the food, and the silent weapon system of electrifying us uh, globally. But this is something I found very interesting. It's called FirstNet. And it says, why FirstNet? FirstNet has been obligated by Congress to take all actions necessary to ensure the building and deployment and operation of the nationwide public safety broadband network. Now, we talked earlier about the Delphi technique. Again, that's the technique that was brought over to the United States via the RAND Corporation. It is the Tavistock Institute creation of mind control. I would recommend that everybody watch this YouTube called um, Psy War, P-S-Y-W-A-R, to understand the uh, massive planned and well-organized manipulation of our minds and the mind control that is massively already, uh, sadly, uh, prevented any type of opposition to what we're seeing occurring. But uh, again, um, 
it's all frequencies, it's all mind control, and it's the Delphi technique, and it's also double speak, because you'll hear something as horrific as FirstNet is obligated to ensure the building deployment. Deployment is a military word. And when you hear after deployment that they talk about public safety, this is how they've caught many of us in doublespeak. Mm. I've researched many, many military documents. They'll say at the top, non-lethal. Well, the very first sentence, it will say, well, it will cause um, heart attacks, uh, cancer, etc. And yet the title of the document or a word within the title is non-lethal, but deadly, of course. Uh, this is something else I found recently, James, I thought was very interesting and important for everyone to know. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, an assault up on all rural country areas. Uh, it's a notice of solicitation for application for the Community Connect grant program for fiscal year 2015. The Agriculture um, Secretary, Tom Vilsack, announced today that the USDA is soliciting applications for fiscal year 2015 for the Community Connect Grant Program. The program provides grants to establish broadband in rural communities where it is currently unavailable That's and where it can have a tremendous positive effect on the quality of life for rural residents. This is called frying us. I did a YouTube where I interviewed uh, Barry Trower, and it's up there. It's called The Cooking of Humanity. Mm -hmm. The Cooking of Humanity. Again, they talk about public safety issues uh, in betterment for rural areas by frying us with broadband. There's the double speak again. They're talking about improving human life, and uh, they're going to do just the opposite. Absolutely, and this is what's so important. As you go to your city and as you look at your climate action plan, understand how how the double speak has been inserted in the plan. Most importantly, understand the entire plan is based on falsified science. Right. So you build from anything that's a lie. From that, you've just got expanded false uh, diabolical realities. So if I leave everyone with one thing it would be that we are in a war of reality and and we are being moved into a virtual reality where everything that is real is now false and everything that is false is now real and the NASA war document that we have had for several years on stopthecrime.net I've done a number of radio shows on this James mm -hmm. yes uh, on page 12 and 13 it talks about the technological ages of humankind. And it and it goes through the hunter-gatherer, the agriculture period of time, the industrial, the internet, uh, the bio and nano, and then the final phase is virtual reality. This is where we are heading. In fact, uh, James, I found an extremely uh, disturbing document on the, in, on the University of Santa Barbara's website. And it is in the uh, link entitled Kids for Profit and Eugenics in the School. Again, that's at the top of the home page of StopTheCrime.net. Um, it is a, um, it's a document from Santa Barbara, and it says, The effects of exposure to virtual child pornography on viewer cognition and attitudes towards deviant sexual behavior. And what we have discovered is with the uh, reduction in um, required age for children to be enrolled in school, which is now uh, the age three and four-year-olds, they're saying that they must be made kindergarten ready. And with the deviant sex and the sex ed that is being uh, presented to our children at much younger ages, it's a form of MK Ultra, where it's splitting of the mind with sexual... Uh, realities that the children um, cannot uh, comprehend or process. And this is something that's being overseen, in part at least, by UNESCO. Absolutely. And uh, we're recommending, of course, as many parents are, that simply the children at this point can no longer be in schools because 
if you look at the fact that they're all on wireless laptop computers oh, provided through the Gates program, mm -hmm. if that in and of itself doesn't underscore the fact that that causes cellular death, it literally decimates the eggs in our little girls and kills the sperm in our little boys. Mm -hmm. So if you discount that it's absolutely a, mu a mugenic amount of frequencies and a slow death to our children, all part of the depopulation program, then you go into the curriculum of completely falsified science realities based upon nothing that's real. And, uh, and then you look at now the sex ed programs that are being brought into the schools. It is diabolical. We can no longer continue to turn our babies over to this machine that is absolutely consuming everything about us. And I guess I would, would certainly, again, uh, recommend everybody that's listening, uh, watch the YouTube, Who is Running America and the Climate Action Plans. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned that multiple times through the program. I can't underscore that enough. Uh, go to the Water Wars YouTube, Stealing Water for Profit and Power. Watch that. Download uh, flyers from primarywater.org, primarywater.org. There's also an extremely important uh, downloadable book on that uh, site, primarywater.org. It's entitled New Water for a Thirsty World. And James, you'll find it very interesting that the forward is by Aldous Huxley. And of course, he did uh, 1984. Yeah, and he talks about brave new wo brave new world, correct? I mean, excuse me. Yeah. Yes, brave new world. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a book that was suppressed when it was written in the '60s. In fact, it was actually bought up by many elites and destroyed. Deborah, and this will help people to understand: we do not have a water scarcity; we have an abundance of water. Everyone, take heart. There are ways in which you cannot consent. And you must not consent, and you will not understand what you need to know uh, in order to not consent unless you educate yourself. Well, thank you very much, Deborah, for being on Real Politic. All great information. I very much appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, and I'll look forward to sharing down the road. Thank you, everybody. Take care, and uh, go to StopTheCrime.net. There's a wealth of information there. Thanks again, Deborah.